Hey y'all, it's me, <laughs> and it's warm out here. I'm about ready to go inside. Actually, I did have to go inside earlier and just cool down a bit. I thought while I have this garden uncovered that I'd show you what's growing in here and explain a little bit about these rows that look like grass. Uh, I know some of y'all are saying, you know, you need to get rid of that before it grows into your garden. Well. It actually won't grow into the garden because it's winter wheat. And I did cut some of it with scissors because I don't want to use the weed eater and have all of that in the garden itself. But mostly I'm just kind of walking on it like this, just crimping it down and it will eventually die off. It won't spread into the garden though, so we're good there. All right, as you can see, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, goodness, allergies, it's that time of year. So this whole row is obviously onions, and they're doing really, really well. And even the teeny tiny little, little Walla Walla sweet onions that I planted, it looks like we're going to have a, a decent little amount of those, so that's good. And over here, we have the asparagus. And let me get down close to one so you can see. They look, they look really good, actually. And I only lost two of, I think we set either 40 or 60 out. So to only have lost two, that's pretty good. And then down here, this whole little patch is the colorful beets and they're really good to eat you know you can eat just the, the leaves as a salad type thing um, probably as like a kilt lettuce um, if y'all know what that is you've heard that before um, or you can wait until the bulb completely develops and eat the, the beet so anyway pretty versatile little little vegetable but they're pretty if nothing else and I think I'm I think I'm not going to cover them back over tonight it's supposed to be like 58 degrees here and my geese are hopefully contained Aiden and Aaron spent pretty much the whole um, day or a good portion of the day getting the the bird lot, the bird yard, closed in so that the birds can't get out. We still have some chickens running around. We're going to have to grab them and put them in in their little their little house tonight, and they'll be fine. Okay, and, and through here we have some celery, and we also have some weeds. And my problem is that I was unsure which was the weed and which was the celery, but I can see now. Right here we've got, I, I needed my glasses on, and I need my little hoop hoe over here, but um, anyway, you can see the difference. See this little celery right here, and this great old big weed right here, let's just, uh, let's just pull his little leaves so we can see the celery easier. And now, now that I can take these, these white things off. I'll be able to keep this garden a whole lot cleaner because honestly it's just such a big deal to take the this white cover off and put it back on that I really just kind of don't all right and then these right here are just some uh, some lettuce um, can't remember the name of it but it, it will make like a little bunch lettuce a head and then the sugar snap peas all the way down through here they're looking to me they're looking a little weak so we'll have to just see what they do they may or may not decide to come on if they don't within a week if they're not looking really good I'm just going to pull them out and plant some um, some seed I've got plenty of seed and so I'll just direct so and we'll start again. I may just have put them out at kind of a bad 
bedtime. Uh, yeah, I need to come back down here and hoe a little bit. It will be much easier to do that daily. Now that these white tarps hopefully won't be going back on. Well, they'll probably have to go on two nights this week. Because it's supposed to be down in the 30s. But then I don't want them to get bit. But anyway. And then down in here, I did cover these back over. Because these are little bitty dudes. I've got, uh, let me see. Um, up here on this end, I think, are the carrots that I set out. You can see the little bitty carrots and that's another thing that can be probably more easily started from seed but I just got excited and um, I mean direct sown is what I'm saying but I got excited and started them from seed. All right right here we have um, snapdragons lots of snapdragons walking down this way we have dill and a weed, but lots of little dill. And they're they're laying over where I watered them a little while ago, but they're fine. They'll stand up and do their thing in a minute. Lots and lots of dill. You see another good thing about having this winter wheat in the pathway is that when it's wet, it's more it's less dangerous to walk because honestly this red clay mud when it's when it's wet or this red clay when it's wet it is slick 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 and you can end up on your hiney in just a thought and then right here we have I think some more snapdragons I think those are snapdragons and then down here and I didn't put out little tags up here we'll know what they are when they <laughs> grow up I think these are spinach I may end up having to cover the spinach and the lettuce back over. But now this whole little garden right here, all the way down to that end, is broccoli. It's two different kinds of broccoli. You can see the difference. One end is yodfa, and the other end is rapini. And these, this style of broccoli isn't a, a bunching broccoli. It actually grows tall and skinny like an asparagus and then it has a little broccoli head on the top now it is my understanding that that broccoli actually will um, taste a little bit like asparagus it's like a cross between an asparagus and a broccoli and since we like asparagus I thought that might be just a perfect little way to do it and now I did lose I did lose a couple little cabbages through here but this whole little bed is cabbage and I gave them or pops gave them he planted these gave them plenty of space so they could spread out and get really really big and yummy he loves his cabbage that man, I, I think that there's been times in our lives when he would eat almost a cabbage every single day. <laughs> and I'm not sure what he's doing down there, but he's down there on the tractor. And now the rest of these beds, they they look like they're a mess, but they're really they're really not going to be that big of a deal. Unfortunately, they don't have any compost. These first these first three. Um, not these two but the first three over there and this first one right here they all we, we put some compost on those in the fall last year but the rest of them are just going to be red clay red clay dirt so we're gonna do the best we can with them but um, each one of them will have to have some work cleaning them out a little bit but that's not a big deal with my hoop hoe I'll just whack them off at the at the base and use my little garden rake and pull the, the cut off weeds right out of there. And I probably will use the weed eater and clean, clean these pathways up a little bit before I start setting the rest of them. But uh, 
you can see they're raised just a little bit but this is not what the the beds the final beds will will look like um, I think I told you I, we are going to it, it probably will take several years to actually get it done but we are going to actually make hugel culture raised beds so as Aaron and Aiden and I and Corey and Papa Hugh may take all of us as we get started with that we will definitely show you what we're doing and uh, I'm excited about it I'm partly excited about it because you know the beds will have a definite space they will be a, they will be contained by a little wooden wall and there will be a nice wide walkway ask me why that's important <laughs> that's important because my feet just do not do they don't understand um, how to walk real easily anymore and they treat they trip fairly easily but anyway so there you go I'm just a little klutzy I've always been a little klutzy and as a matter of fact let me tell you a quick story it's it's pretty funny um, when I was 50 so it's been almost 12 years ago I was always really involved in politics and I've told you all that I've just I was a political geek still tend to be just a little bit <laughs> but uh, I was working for a commissioner's campaign of someone in our county a friend of mine it was her husband and uh, the little guy that worked in the I'm gonna sit down for just a minute or I'm gonna lean for just a minute the little guy that I think I'm sunburned and I've worn a hat all day um, I'm gonna turn because I know where to look if I'm looking at <laughs> if I'm looking at the circles I know where to look so anyway the guy that worked at, he's just like 16 or so worked at our um, in the dairy department of our local grocery store and he and I, we were we were friends and, and talked and chatted every time I went in. But I found out that he was actually supporting the opponent to the person I was supporting. Hold on a minute, guys. Let me clean those off because they look pretty dusty. I've had it in my pocket all day. So when we were at the library, we were working at the library the day they were uh, on the day of voting. And he was handing out flyers for... For his um, person and I was handing out flyers for my person so we made a little game of it and we started just kind of you know speeding toward the person that was parking to see which one of us could give them our flyer first and um, and it was just fun and it was me being a 50 year old grandma just being silly playing with a 16 year old young man and just having a fun time and so anyway at one point, he was down at the lower end of the driveway, and I was at the upper end of the driveway, and some guy in a truck parked right between the two of us. Well, he acted like he was going to take off running, and so I thought, I, I don't know if he, he did or not, but I thought, oh no, you're not. So I did. I took off running. There's a problem, though. My 50-year-old feet had forgotten how to run, and I tripped... <laughs> And I fell really hard. My papers went everywhere. I kind of rolled. And this was back before I had gained 50 pounds. So, I mean, it it wasn't quite as traumatic as it, it sounds. Or it didn't look quite as traumatic. But thankfully, Hugh had stopped at the library on his way home from work to vote. And so he was there when this happened. And he came out and uh, I had apparently hit my head because I was pretty out of it. And he was sitting there kind of popping my, my cheeks and saying, are you okay? Are you okay? And I don't know how long I was out, but I heard an ambulance coming. And I'm saying, no, I'm not going in an ambulance. <laughs> I remember just, I, I sounded like I was drunk. And um, so anyway, the, the when they got there, the paramedics insisted that, you know, I go into the the ambulance and let them check everything over and um, 
they tried they tried to talk me into going in the ambulance and at the at that moment in time which was one of the rare times in our married life we didn't have insurance we didn't have insurance and so um, I asked them I said, how much is does it cost to go to the hospital and they said it's about a 900 and I said no if I need to go you can drive me <laughs> so anyway we ended up going home and as time passed that evening my right elbow was just throbbing and it was swelling bigger and bigger and the fingers on my left hand two of them were just throbbing and they were swelling and the fingernails both of them I'd mashed them so hard that the fingernails were were going to come off there was no doubt about that so he finally said come on we're going to the emergency room so at that point I wasn't going to argue with him I was really hurting and we went to the emergency room and it turned out that I had crushed those two fingers and I had broken my right elbow <laughs> So, just me being silly and goofy ended up being a really big hospital bill and having to wear a soft cast. Um, and they, while well, they wrapped the fingers on the other hand, they said, well, there's not really anything we can do for those other than just to wrap them. So, that was that, was that experience. <laughs> So I am, I've been klutzy my entire life, but I'm more klutzy the older I get. And now I need really wide pathways in my gardens, especially when I have to cover them over and we have wood and brick or block holding down that white fabric. So that needs to have an allowance made where there's plenty of room for my feet. All right, and this little chicken out here by Corey's car, she's got to go to the back. And I'm going to take you guys inside and show you something that is one of the funniest things that's happened here in a while. Okay. I think I've taken you over and I've shown you um, where the duck lives and where are the ducks and where... Our little female duck was laying laying eggs and um, turns out that we had a few chickens also going in there and laying eggs let's go through this way maybe the dogs won't be so boogery goodness it's hot don't look at my house guys I've been outside today in the garden most of the day so nothing's clean but that's okay there's Bodie there's your old guy he's not even gonna look <laughs> all right but anyway he came carrying a tiny tiny little chicken over here from the from the duck house the other day and he had the funniest look on his face so we ended up getting him or her some sisters let me see if I can get her come here baby come here come here all right this is him or her we don't know what it's gonna be but his or her name is Duck. I was going to call it Homegrown, but that's just too, that's too many syllables. So, <laughs> anyway, no more of those eggs were hatching. And I told him, I said, well, we can't leave it by itself because if we do, you know, it, it may not make it. These little guys are really, really social. Look, baby, turn your face around here. Let me see how cute you are. So we, we went to we went to Lowe's or not Lowe's but to um, Tractor Supply. I got to clean their cages out today. And they had a minimum of four, so you had to buy four. So we came home with two cinnamon and two leghorns. Well, <laughs> yesterday watch them stretch their little legs. Isn't that funny? So yesterday we had to go to 
uh, Hometown Hardware and pick up some black cow so that I can make soil blocks this week. And uh, while we were there, they had some buff Orpingtons or Orpingtons. I'm not really sure how they're pronounced. But we have read, and a friend told me, that they are really, really good mamas, and they're broody. So I thought, we don't have any chickens that are broody. And I hate for the duck to, <laughs> to, to have to uh, hatch the chicken eggs. So I got three of those as well. So now we have eight new chickens. But this is what you guys have to see right here this look how big they are look how big they are they're just ginormous these are the guineas they started out so teeny tiny they were i think a little bit smaller actually than than the chickens the baby chicks and they're like at least 10 times that size and it's not been a month i don't think it's been nearly a month since Aaron went after these guys. Do you remember? I don't. So this evening, I washed a big tub. I have a really big tote like this one that's twice as deep. So these guys are getting ready to go in it. I'm just waiting on it to dry a little bit. And then these guys are going in this one. And because, first of all, this one is just, is too warm down in there with there not being any vents or anything um, and it being so small. So we have definitely got to put them in something that would be a little bit cooler. And there's Pops. When you get done recording, I need to ask you a question. Okay. Hello, everybody. More chickens. Yeah, more chickens. More chickens. But anyway. All right, let's go back outside. What you need, babe? I can probably help you. Huh? Come on, Nana. No, come on. I'll feed you in a minute. Come on. Do you want? I said, what do you need right now? Not while you're recording. Well, I can answer questions and record. But is any question you want on there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes me curious. All right, so let's go out this way. And I will show you what Aaron and Ada did today, which will make my life a whole lot busy. easier. Yes, they have. They've been really, really busy. Oh, you left the gate open, Pops. Because all of the chickens and everything have to be over yeah, there. Yeah, they do. They do. we got to get them all on the other side. Got to get them all on the other side, and then hopefully they'll not ever be in the garden again. But... Uh, Aaron and Aiden put up chicken wire over top of everything. So, see? Now these little guys cannot just wander through the gate, which is what they did. No. Are you going to be stinky? Are you going to be stinky? Hmm? That's not okay. I know. But see this gate, they just come right across the little little tongs or right underneath. What is it? You just want to be on the camera. I know that. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. You're a booger. You're such a booger. I know. But anyway, I guess I am good. But anyway, they have gone all the way around. I think there's a little section that I've got to... I have petted you. Uh, there's a little section I've got to go get some more chicken wire for. But look in here, guys. This is funny. Aaron moved the compost the other day. And it looks like, yes, I will have to put chicken wire all the way across the back of that or they're just going to hop over in the yard. And there's Ferdinand. You better not come up behind me and bite me. You just better not. You're just a stinker. 
my little male guys really are friendly in a very kind of strange way. They love to be petted, and they love to nibble on you. It's just, I don't know. But anyway, well, folks, I just wanted to let you know what was going on. You can see down there the fence is gone. Or what is it you want, and why are you being such a booger? I know, I know, I know, I know. But they've taken the fence down. And we're in the process of having an actual bird yard. And the pond will be enlarged considerably. And once everything is cleaned up, and I think it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to be such a fun place to come. I'll probably bring me a lawn chair out here and come and sit with these little turdlies. Because they won't be with me in the garden anymore. And this one, this one is Ryan. That one's Ryan. And you can see on top of his head that little divot. That's the only way I can really tell him apart from the other males. The, the noisy little low voice one, that's a little female. But uh, anyway. All right, y'all. <laughs> you are loved. I will talk to you soon. And hopefully Pops and I are going to have a, a live this weekend. So I hope you can tune in and we'll just have fun chatting. See you later. Bye-bye.